your new friendship that I found that uh, I just had to visit with you a moment for my viewers. How oh, very sweet. I'm be very glad to answer any questions you would like to know. Well, you know, as, as I mentioned to you uh, when we were talking earlier, um, your heart really does lie in this area and in oh, these people, absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely. I wouldn't mo live anyplace else now for anything. And I came from a big city. You should tell them about it, because I think this is quite interesting. And, and uh, the women who watch my show I know will identify with you because of the, the uh, suffering, a lot of suffering and, and heartache, and then success. Well, I, it started out with my husband and I visiting down here as tourists for about four years. And we came one April, and the cave was for lease. And my husband took about 10 minutes, and we had Marvel Cave. Mm. And I'd never worked in my life. Yeah. I'd been a housewife and a 14, a 16-year-old boy. I think most mothers think that's a kind of a hard yeah. age to leave home. So, so did I. Now, you were in Illinois at the time, weren't you? Yes. We all met in Illinois. We did. But for you many came years. down by yourself. Came down by myself the next year in February, and uh, um, this was, I, I'm sure, much of a heartbreak for me to leave my family right. as it is for any of you to leave your families. If they had come with me, yeah. there'd yeah. been no heartache. So I came down and opened up Marvel Cave in February. And there was nothing here but just the cave, there and even in the surrounding area there was nothing, nothing here. Nothing else was here. You were the first one to have an indoor Toilet. bathroom. <laughs> That's right. I really was. And I, I came by that because I'm so afraid of snakes and bugs and <laughs> everything else, having lived in the city for so many years. And so my husband came down and said, oh, we'll fix that. That's no problem. So he managed to get this bathroom in for me, and this was a great curiosity. <coughs> places in Branson did not have bathrooms, right. unless they were very wealthy people. So they couldn't understand that Mary Hershen would have to have a bathroom where she was going to stay. And you had two men, I understand, working for you when you first opened the cave, right? That's right. How many people do you have working in Silver Dollar City now? About 450. You said you signed the paper. No, we're talking about Marvel Cave. This is the third largest cave in the, in the United States, isn't it? That's right. And tell me, uh, when you started the cave, when was it, 1949, did you say? 1950. 1950. Uh, did you have the steps? How many stairs down now? Is oh, it? I don't know. It's, 500, it's over 500 feet to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So we have steps enough to get there. Mm. Did you have what kind of steps did you have when you came? Wooden, wooden stairs that molded and rotted out in about three years. So our first job was to put in cement stairs mm. and lighting. What kind of lighting did you use first? Uh, lanterns and candles. Did you have somebody changing them all the time? Uh, yes, indeed. Mm. I was not going to ever learn to light those lanterns <laughs> because that meant I have to go in the cave. And so I guess. You probably never did uh, that. I never did. Even I though this learned. is the big thing. Well, when did you come up with Silver Dollar City? 1960. So it was 10 years later. Yes, that's right. What was your uh, ideal or uh, idea about Silver Dollar City? I know what I've gained from it through seeing it through your eyes, but I'd like to know what your aim was, Mary. My aim was to build something unique that uh, hopefully nobody else had uh, anything like it. We had some help in designing it. Russell Pearson from Oklahoma City came and helped with our designing. In fact, made the model of Main Street. And my son, Jack, built that with a ruler, running in to measure the model. Isn't we had no sense? designers. And you just started out with a very small Main Street with uh, some of your craft, didn't you? Right. And that's all we had for a long time. And we decided to go into crafts in a big way about 1963. Mm -hmm. And it has been successful ever since. Right. People enjoy seeing the things made, and they want that particular article that they're w watching. Right. Well, I know you're growing so quickly uh, in this area, and Silver Dollar City is leading the way. Um, there's some other things I want to ask you in just a second.
talking some about how Silver Dollar City has grown and the many people that it's taken to help build it, right, Mary? Yes, it's taken many people. It started out with about 20, and my son Jack built it with a ruler, or with a model. Mm -hmm. We had no architect and no blueprints, and so this is the way it started. I'm very proud of Main Street because when Paul Henning came, and with his production people, this was the part of town they chose to have this, their Beverly Hillbilly show. And this is uh, another full story that, that I'd love to talk to you about an hour about, but just to recap it, I know this is, has been uh, a friendship and relationship that has grown with Paul Henning and you, have Yes, yes, I'm very fond of the man. And when somebody asked me if I owned a part of Beverly Hillbillies or did they own a part of Silver Dollar City, I said, you won't believe it, but it's pure friendship. And he said, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> Frankly, I don't believe it. And I said, well, it is. Well, I think that Paul Henning is a man that would uh, recognize uh, the real, true culture of a countryside. And this is uh, all blended so well with his story. Well, perhaps so. Paul uh, liked us, I think, because we uh, were uh, perhaps to him trying to do something that was real, that was a natural thing with the setting we have. Right. And he doesn't stay in Hollywood any morning, has to, does he? <laughs> no. In fact, he comes back to visit us about three times a year. Well, they're getting ready to have a big play down here. I hope to go down and become a part of it. You suppose the Hatfields and McCoys will fight over it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> well, Mary, I know coming up here from Oklahoma City is just about a five, five and a half hour drive. They stop to eat, you know, like take an hour. But uh, it truly is, is well worth it. And the fact that uh, you, since uh, I was here four or five years ago, a lot of lodges have gone in around, haven't Yes, they? that's right. The area, the entire area has grown. And a lot of it has grown because of the festival that we have in the fall. And uh, that's in October, ending the... Yes, that's right. In October we have 16 days. So if you want to come to a mountain, a cave, a city and a beautiful lady come to Silver Dollar City and uh, say howdy to Mary Hershon when you see her, okay?
We're here in the candy store watching uh, Grandpa make candy, and along with me is Sandy Warren. Sandy, you're uh, from Oklahoma City, aren't you? Right, yes, I am. And it looks to me like you're working mm -hmm. at uh, Marble Cave Park. That's the same as Silver Dollar City, right? Right, yes, it is, uh huh. Well, do you go to college in Oklahoma? I go to Oklahoma State University. You got a job up here for the summer. Right. A friend of mine was working up here, and she let me onto it, so I applied, and I'm working up here at Silver Dollar City. Do you stay out of the candy shop? This is Paul Davis, <laughs> the man they call Grandpa, making all the candy. Has she been over here stealing your sugar? Oh, listen, they all come over and steal the sugar I'd be, and I want to welcome you to Silver Dollar City, Missouri. It's a pleasure to have you in our candy shop, I'd be. Thank you, and your helper over here, yeah, Sally. Right? Over here. June. 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 Then you're going to have to stick your head in here, or you okay. won't be in the, in the picture. Here we go. Hand test the candy for you. Watch, folks, right down in the old boiling candy. You like this? You saw the steam come off of it. And this is the old-fashioned 1880 way of hand testing the candy. Here we have the piece of candy. And I'm going to cool it just a little bit more. And then I'm going to give these girls a bite test. Real quick. Okay. And see if the candy's done. What kind of candy is it? This is going about? to be peppermint stick candy. Junior, you already know it's done, so here we go. Now we're going to pour it on this slab right behind you, and we have to do it rather quickly. Here we go. They're going to pour it on the slab. The reason I'm having to move out of the picture so you can, can get it. I've never seen anybody test candy with their hands, so I wouldn't suggest any of you at home because Granddad has got it. There we go, pouring it out on the slab. This is a marble slab that Granddad uses here. Of course, he makes all kinds, sassafras candy, peppermint stick, peanut butter, and also... Um, Delicious, delicious peanut brittle. Dad, I'm going to sneak over here and get around on this side if I might, okay? Now, this is uh, yellow. Why, I thought peppermint sticks were red and white. That's well, true. When we pour it out, ought to be, it is this color. It's got an amber color. But we have to pull it on our old-fashioned hook on the other side of the room, and we're going to do that for you in just a little bit. And right now, we have to cool it just a little bit and mix some red food coloring in it. And most any time, it'll be a good time before you take a little break, and we'll yeah. do it. This is the way they did it in, in 1880. 1880, right. We have a picture on the wall just behind you, the picture of my father taken about 1895, and this is the old-fashioned way that Dad taught me to make the candy. Great. We'll be right back. Good. We'll look for Okay, what are we doing now? I'd be, I'm going to try to blow you a bubble out of the old-fashioned candies here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so let's try. We have to cool it down just a little bit. Naturally, it don't want to cool. Yeah? Yeah, so we'll try again here. It's still the peppermint candy we're making. Still the peppermint stick candy. I was going to think, when you want them to work, they won't work naturally, huh? Bet that does. You know how to be, I think, here at Silver Dollar City, we better leave the glass blowing to the glass blower. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. But I do have something I want you to do. Okay. I want you to eat this piece of glass. How about that? Turn up, girls. And way up there like that. Hey, give her a hand. How about that? Hey, how about that? Put a professional glass eater way down here at Silver Dollar City, Missouri. I've been trying to do that for wow, a while. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Candy and sold it right here in their old candy shop. 
Well, we're real proud to do that, too. Look how white that is. Isn't that great? Our next uh, step out of be will be putting the stripe on the candy. So we might want to break the film just a little bit and do that. What do you say? Okay, let's do it. Stripes and one wide stripe. So you brought a bunch Look of Look here, kids. This is one wide stripe. And Junior, you got your special formula? Yeah. Right there, yeah. We put this one wide stripe right on there. He worked so great with all the boys and girls. Then, here. kids, we're going to ask you to help us count these stripes. Will you do that? Okay. Now, here's number one. So, say, okay, Jimmy? Right there. Number one, say it. One. Number. Two. Number. Three. Number. Four. I can't hear you. Pick up this. Oh, wait, this is a whoop. Okay. Wait for Grandpa. Okay. Number. Five. five. Number. Six. Uh oh, we're going to put one more on. Yeah. They said six. We're going to put a foot on there, Judy. Doctor said five. Oh, we did, but they just fly. Now, this so is Now, then we go to the box warmer. And does that look like a piece of peppermint stick candy? Hey, kids, does it? These kids are from Oklahoma City, aren't they, Adam? Tulsa, another good town. In oh, Tulsa, say, that's right. good neighbors, too. Got lots of people there. You gonna put that on the back yeah, warmer now? Yeah, let's okay. over here and get warmed up now. Okay, this well. This might be a chance for another break, if you'd like. All right, let's see. I'll get it. No. No. We're going to make some old-fashioned candies here, and this is one of our newest machines, and watch it go, girl. There we go. Look at that. How about oh, that? Yeah. Oh, look at that. And we've got a lot of help here today. Let me get another piece, Roxbury. Okay. I thought he was going to make a candy. What do you think about that? Come down here with me. Look, yeah, look hey. Right you here, here? Yeah, like that. There we go. Look at that. I want these kids to press their handle down for me. Look at We put a piece like that. Get over here, son. Drop it up here. Press it down to Esky Presto, and let's raise it up and see what we have, okay? Let's see there. Oh, Christmas candy. Oh, boy, how about that? Yeah, right. that's it. Now we're going to show you one more thing. Yeah, how about that? Those are three good. Come on over here by me, sweetheart. Okay? This piece is a little different, and by the way, we use an old machine like this. And we flatten out a piece of candy like this. Let's put that well, lid down. Heavy. Yeah, that's heavy. And these machines are all about 75 years old. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. Then we cool it just a little bit. And then I hope everybody can see these old cogwheels, everybody. And look what we do with them. That's the way you make the ribbon candy? Yes, it is. Look at it. Come out there. Yeah, yeah. How about that? There you are, boy. Granny came to see us in Oklahoma City a couple of years ago, but I'm here with her in her country now, and you've been busy making life soap, haven't you, Granny? I sure have. You know, Silver Dollar City just wouldn't be the same without you and, uh, and your life soap. About how much do you sell here? We make, cut, and sell about two tons a month. Two tons a month of life soap? I, I think it's very interesting. Why don't you tell them your recipe for making life soap? We take a half a gallon of water, one can of lye, and five pounds of fat four to four and a half hours cooking time and about 2,200 strokes and man, you're in business. And it's all done right back here, isn't it? That's right. And your uh, wash pots are boiling now in uh, your little smoke, uh, smoke filled area, right? I keep it going. I take up one pot and I put another one to go on. Granny, you're from this area, aren't you? Weren't you born and raised around here? I hatched down here. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, you were telling me about your granddaughter's wedding last night. Tell me about it. Oh, yes, my granddaughter got married, my oldest granddaughter. I've just got 16 grandchildren. And she got married last night. Tell them what she wore. She wore a real old dress that she remade, and it was real beautiful. It was a long white dress. Yeah, it belonged to your, your mother. mother, her grandmother's wedding dress. Well, I know the Ozarks, um, of course, have really become more prominent since Silver Dollar City opened. And how long have you been with the city here making your life so? About four years been here four years. Well, that's, a, that's a lot of life soap after all this time. Tell them, tell them what life soap's good for. 
It's good for poison ivory, poison oak, pick, chigger, flea, and mosquito bites, athletic feet, dandruff, and dirty clothes, dirty mouth children, and catfish bait. <laughs> I like that dirty mouth children and catfish bait because it really is true. I know uh, as people pass by here, as I've been visiting with you, different people you know have used my soap before. You can always spot them, can't you? Oh, yes. You can tell when a woman walks up and looks at the soap. You can tell whether she's made soap or not. Well, Granny, how do you mountain people feel about Silver Dollar City? Well, we think it's great. We all have, it's a good place to go to have a good time and to see the things done that we've seen done back when we were kids and on up. Most people continue these crafts in their homes through this area. And so Silver Dollar City has just accumulated all of you, and it's very, very authentic, isn't it? It's a good get-together. You bet. And don't forget, when you come to Silver Dollar City, make sure you get some of Granny's Lights Oak, okay? 